would you like to learn about a different types of spider webs? First up is probably the most well-known type of spider web, the spiral orb web. This is like the classic Halloween decoration, super well-known, it's pretty cool looking, and is mostly made by the who would have guessed, orb weaver spider families, of which there are a couple different families. The function of this web is largely to catch flying insects. The insects will fly directly into the web and get stuck and allow all of the kind of momentum and movement to be absorbed without breaking the web so the spider can then come catch it. Another feature of the spiral orb web found in some species of spiders is this, the stabilimentum. Also known as the web decorations, it's this very conspicuous spot of silk in an otherwise very hard to see web. Now, it's present in a couple different families and species of orb weaver spiders, and the function is not 100% entirely known. There is a couple different hypotheses. It could be due to anything from helping stabilize the center of the web. Another hypothesis is that it helps the spiders camouflage somehow or also that it makes the web more visible to things like birds and large animals to avoid them flying into and thus damaging the web. However, we still don't 100% know, but either way, it does look pretty cool and does help you avoid walking into it, so that at least works. Another type of spider web is the tangle web, also known as just a cobweb. These are made by the family of tangleweb spiders, also known as cobweb spiders, of which there are many, many species. Kind of the main feature of tanglewebs is that there is no specific pattern or kind of any form to this web. It really is just a tangle of sticky threads made to catch a variety of different insects. They are incredibly irregular, they're usually three-dimensional, and typically they have a more densely silked area to protect the spider and any egg sacs that it has. Some examples of tangleweb spiders include things like the black widows. Up next, similar to the tangleweb spider webs, is the sheet web. It's pretty similar to the tangleweb, except for the fact that it is a lot less irregular and has a more solid and cohesive form. Now, the sheet part of the sheet web actually acts more as a net, and the main kind of catching structure are all of these invisible trip wires above the sheet web. When a flying insect hits one of these trip wires, it falls down into the sheet itself where it gets tangled and then the spider, which usually waits underneath the sheet, can come out and get that insect. Up next, another of the more familiar web shapes is the funnel web. Now the kind of, I guess, stem of the tunnel is just for the spider to hang out and wait until potential prey comes and lands on the outer, more funnel-y part of the web. The outside of the funnel is very, very large, very expansive to provide a large surface area for the possibility of catching prey. And then on the inside, the spider just chills until something lands in the net, at which point it will go out and eat it and usually bring it back inside the funnel. The most famous of the funnel webs are the, of course, Australian Sydney funnel webs, one of the more dangerous spiders in the world. But there are a number of other typically harmless spider species that do use this same web construction. Up next, we have again a somewhat similar web to the funnel web, the tubular web. Now this one, again similar to the funnel, it provides mostly protection and a place for the spider to wait and ambush their prey. And you can see up here, there is a bunch of just sticky trip wires that alert the spider to the presence of an insect, at which point the spider will leave the tube and then go attack the insect. So this one doesn't function quite as much for trapping, but more as just alerting the hidden spider to the presence of a prey item. And of course, finally, we need, I guess, an honorable mention to the trapdoor spiders. The trapdoor is just a kind of spider silk lined hole in the ground where the spider waits and it typically has a hinged lid for the spider to wait underneath, hence the trapdoor. Usually there's also small trip wires radiating out from the center, which is the trapdoor itself, that can alert the spider to the presence of prey, and then the spider will kind of jump up out of the hole, grab the prey, and drag it back into its burrow to enjoy. 